Should you be learning cold approach intensely over the course of a week or should you be learning it more casually over a longer period of time? Well, in this video, I'm gonna take the opportunity to give my point of view on what I think is best or what I would recommend to guys if you are really genuinely thinking about integrating cold approach into your everyday life and what I think is the best way to go about that. So as you are probably aware, if you've been in the dating industry either for a while or maybe you've now just been introduced to it, is that there are just so many options available for guys on what they can do to go and practice cold approaching. So starting with a very simple and basic option, you could go out on your own and practice talking to people. You can go out with your friends, you can go out with a wing, you can instead go to a dating coach or to a dating company and you can do things like a weekend training, a boot camp, or even a residential experience, which for those that don't know, that's like a week long intense training. Now, I don't think there's anything longer than that. So I think for this example, we'll keep it to going out with friends or on your own and also weekend trainings and residentials. Now, all are really great and all have their pros and cons to things. And what I'll do is I'll start with the very simple going out on your own. So the thing with this, right, is that obviously this is going to be for guys who are potentially maybe on a budget or they want to be able to gauge where they're at with their social skills. And this is just a great thing to do. The fact that you are taking that independence uh, or that initiative uh, to actually go out and work on yourself um, is a fantastic thing. So, you know, certainly brownie points for you for doing that. But depending on how good your social skills are, you're still going to find yourself reaching a particular plateau where you know that unless you go and seek help, you're not really going to be progressing with your results. Now, trust me when I say that I have met many guys over the years who have been part of the dating communities uh, all around the world for a very long period of time, like years even, and they are still struggling with their social anxiety or actually even getting decent results with talking to people. And that isn't great. That tells me that, you know what, you need to accept that you are not progressing you're not reaching that skill that you should be getting to that should be seeing you getting results you need actual feedback from an expert to point you where you're going right where you're going wrong and help you tweak those changes so as much as going out on your own or even with a friend or a wing can be good to uh because you can go out on a regular basis really i mean you can go out as frequently as you want um the problem though with that is that you are still going to get to a point where you need professional help and even if you're thinking well i don't want to spend the money and stuff you're not then you're kind of choosing not to accept um uh investing in yourself in this and in fact, whilst I'm even thinking about it, you've also got the situation where you've got guys who have the opportunity to really throw themselves in the deep end with going out and practicing social skills as opposed to people who don't. So you've got guys who maybe work for themselves, maybe they are very successful, maybe they have a lot of money, maybe they can even afford to have like sabbatical experiences from work, so they can throw themselves in the deep end with practicing this. And in fact, time is a big element here of how quickly and how long it might take for you to get good at doing cold approaching. So you've got then the guys who can throw themselves into this. And of course, the more time you spend on this in a short period of time, then absolutely, you're gonna get better faster. But also you can have the guys who are doing the nine to five jobs or they work really strange hours. So they're not going to have as much of an opportunity to go out and practice as opposed to someone who's got all the free time, of course. You know, if someone's got the nine to five, they might be so tired after they come out of work that they only want to do uh, an hour here or an hour there. Or maybe they only have the weekends free or maybe they only have like the odd weekday free and so on. 
So it can be then very difficult to try and incorporate a routine into things if you've got other things going on in your life, as opposed to if you've got all the free time in the world to be able to go out and do it. Now, going back then to going out and actually then practicing and reaching a plateau, you know, don't leave it forever to make that decision of, right, maybe I do need to learn that extra skill. So on the flip side, we've then got the guys who maybe do like the weekend trainings or they do a residential experience. So they've actually put the time aside to focus quite intensely on going out and practicing talking to women and they're doing it under the guidance of other experts and professionals in the niche. Now this can be absolutely fantastic to at least speed up that process of getting good talking to people but there is a caveat to that though. A lot of the guys that I have met with this, yes they have you know a lot of jobs or they have a very busy work life that after they have gone out and done the residential or boot camp experience they're not carrying on with the skills that they've now developed very quickly they've had that euphoric experience they've got such great results they've probably got phone numbers dates etc from doing the uh, the training but they kind of then resort back to the routine that they had before that they went and did the training because maybe for whatever reason they either get lazy, they either are struggling to try and fit it into their normal lifestyle, they haven't got people to go out and practice with or perhaps um, they uh, they just struggle with the routine, uh, which I might I think I might have just mentioned that, but it can be very difficult for those guys And I think there's sort of like a certainly a misunderstanding where guys think that once they've learned the skill, it's just there for life. They've just got it ingrained into uh, into them. But that isn't true. You have to be constantly practicing to at least just keep that skill kind of somewhat up there at a decent level to make sure that you are maintaining it. So you've got the scenarios of uh, the guys who have all the time in the world, they can go out and practice talking to people and they get good quickly. You've then got the guys who have like the nine to five jobs or the really weird work lifestyles and they don't really have that much time to, to go out and do it. You've then got the guys who will go out and either practice on their own or they'll practice with a friend or a wing. And then you've also got the scenario of guys who then go and do the weekend trainings and also the residential experiences. So what would I recommend for guys to do if they really do want to ingrain the skill of cold approaching into their daily lives? Well, I actually would say you should be considering doing both But once you have done both, it is about making sure that you are incorporating it into your daily life. Like you don't need to be like dedicating hours or weekends going out to talk to people on the street uh, or just cold approaching in general. Um, You want to be making sure that you are utilizing it wherever it is possible to do so. So if you're on your way to work, if you're heading home from work, if you're going to the gym or back, or if you're going to socialize with people, if you're going uh, to go food shopping, whatever, those are the times that if you see someone that you're attracted to, then you definitely need to be doing cold approaching in those scenarios. Otherwise, what was the point in learning the skill? So what is the best strategy that I think would be great for guys to do, especially if maybe you're new to the industry or you've been doing it for a while? Uh, This would be the chronological order that I would be suggesting to guys, which would be the first of all, go out and practice on your own. Gauge where you're at socially and how you socialize with people. If you're struggling holding eye contact with people, if you're struggling giving compliments or asking for directions, then you know very early on and very quickly that you need to go to a dating coach for help or you need to do some kind of intense training if you want to uh, get that skill much faster or sooner than later. Now, you've also then got the option of going out then with uh, a friend or with a wing just to take it that little bit step further if you are struggling to do it on your own to then also just gauge what where you're at if you've got support from people who are 
um, essentially acting uh, as, well, well, offering you support, I should say. I've kind of mixed my words there. But yeah, if they are there to offer you support and give you the support that you need as a friend. Now, even then, though, if they are someone who's struggling or they're not at that level that they can comfortably go and socialize and talk to people, then they are also going to be in the same stage as you that they need to go to a dating coach. Now, as for then the kind of course that you should choose, that is entirely down to your discretion. Are you someone that's looking to kind of uh, get things uh, learned quickly as soon as possible, then definitely, you know, doing a weekend training or a residential is great. I know there are coaches out there that offer more like a long-term thing where you will do like a couple of hours per week with them, which I would recommend is probably better if the option is there simply because what you're learning there isn't just the skill but you're also being trained to uh, incorporate it into your weekly routine and it's the habit is what we want here not just so much the skill but the habit as well that's where people tend to struggle you can learn all of the greatest skills in the world but if you're not incorporating it into your daily routine into a habit then it's worthless at the end of the day but then once you've actually gone done the training whatever kind of intensity level then you go back to going out either practicing on your own or going out and practicing with a friend or a wing and you can do that for however long but more importantly just focus on doing it when you're on your way to places or coming back from places. Doing even just like one approach a day because you were on your way somewhere, you saw someone that you like and you went for it, will be just as powerful, if not more powerful, than trying to dedicate like a a weekend per month to going out to do it. That will still at least keep the skill there, but again, ideally, you want to just use it when you see someone that you're attracted to. You don't need to necessarily be dedicating time aside to go out and doing it. And I think a great example actually with this will be using the dating coaches as an example. They are really good at getting results, not because they are just focused on doing approaching all of the time. Yes, they work in the industry, but I can assure you so many of them switch off from thinking about dating once they have finished working with clients. They go spend time with their family. They go spend time with friends. They go and uh, socialize or do like hobbies of sorts and stuff, or they focus on improving their independence and confidence by uh, just doing very sociable things and trying to be more cultural. They'll go to like museums and galleries and the cinema and all this and that because they want to just sort of switch off from dating and then they can learn some stuff and then come back and they've got things to talk about with people. And even when they go out and practice um, uh, their, their own dating skills or conversations, They're kind of doing it from a place of curiosity and just getting to know people. And uh, and then if they like them, then absolutely, they'll go for the number that way. So rather than kind of like digressing, rather than trying to explain how dating coaches have their dating lives, just remember, if you want to really incorporate or if you really want to make sure that you don't lose this skill of cold approaching, make sure you are practicing on a regular basis. But try and get to a point as quickly as possible where you don't need to be dedicating time to go out and and practicing the the cold approaching skill just be using it in your normal everyday life and it doesn't even have to necessarily be every day it can just be when you see someone that you like it could be then every couple of days but as long as you are out and about and you are using that skill that is what is important And that is where then going out and practicing with a wing or practicing on your own or going to a dating coach or dating company can be really beneficial for guys and isn't going to cause you to fall back on old habits where you're just not doing anything after you've done the practice or done the training. 
So I hope this video was useful for you. If you can, please like the video, subscribe to the channel. Every little bit certainly helps me to grow and expand and then reach more guys, give them dating advice or give them advice that helps put them in the right direction of dating coaches. But also if you are someone who has a lot of social anxiety or maybe, just maybe, you need help with having that extra nudging motivation and accountability then by all means do have a look on my website i offer life coaching i offer integral eye movement therapy and i also offer my dating desensitization therapy to just help you also pick that pace up with the cold approach skill but to also make sure that you're using it right that you aren't just gonna develop cold, the cold approach skill and then afterwards just never use it again. I want you to be as comfortable as possible with talking to strangers and overcoming your social anxiety. So consider me that sort of baby step towards working with a coach if you really genuinely want to do the whole cold approaching thing and uh, and have the date in life that you want. So enough of me talking. I'm going to sort of let you go I've been Dan, that dating anxiety guy. Thank you so much for watching and look forward to more videos coming from me.